All right, time for a little heat check here. Shine a light with Bruce Shine because spring training, for those that say, okay, well, what's the whole point of it? Bruce has figured out what the formula is. For those who say, not to say disparaging spring training, but why should I care? Tell me why. Yeah, it doesn't matter uh, unless you're talking about significant injury or we're talking about young upstart guys that could maybe be unearthed that will have a more of an impact for would-be contending teams than you otherwise would have thought. There are three names that come to mind. Uh, I'm going to start in, in no particular order. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's start in the south side of Chicago with, with Luis Robert. Now, yeah. if it wasn't enough that the organization furnished him with a multi-million dollar contract before he even stepped on a major league field, yeah. you have his teammate at breakout star, albeit from a year ago, Eloy Jimenez, mm-hmm. uh, saying that uh, he is going to be none other than the quote-unquote next Mike Trout. Hang well, on a second. He's already called three MVPs, you know, five top five MVP finishes, like right out of the gate. No problem. Yeah, that's, a, that's a heck of a a lot of heat oh, to put on a guy uh, expected to be the starting center fielder. He's having a heck of a spring. He's batting 400, had his first spring homer the other day. He's got a bunch of other yeah. extra base hit, hits uh, mixed in there. Uh, you know, the White Sox are a very interesting team on any number of levels because of all the offseason activity. But, but you look at the young nucleus they're developing mm-hmm. with Jimenez and Robert and the guys in the pitching staff, Giolito with the breakout last year. We're going to get right. to see Kopech. Take the mound again. Dylan Covey, Dylan Cease, hopefully yeah, those guys. It's yeah. a very, very, you know, interesting Rodan. team. Rodon. I don't ex- – listen, coming off a 70, whatever it was, 73, 74 win season from a year ago, they get the 500. They've done themselves proud. Not expecting them to be a contender yeah. in 2020. The St. Louis Cardinals, on the other hand, they are the reigning champions in their division. Uh, and they were a batter too short offensively before Marcelo Zuna walked out the door. And you're Third wondering. percent a year ago, 25th. Yep. Brutal. Go and, ahead. And, and so where, where are they getting to, to compensate from, you know, the missed offense and an offense that overall mm-hmm. was pretty much lost beyond Paul Goldschmidt. Uh, Paul DeYoung, you love what you saw last year, his breakout year. He's having a huge spring, too, by the way. He's mm-hmm. got three bombs. Dylan Carlson, a name to keep an eye on, having a monster spring, one of the highly touted prospects in the sports switch hitting outfielder. And listen, this is tough to put on a guy who's who's just getting his career underway, but he's not a luxury item. I mean, right now, the way they're comprised, they need him to be at least somewhat resembling what what he's shown. They need some offense. So if they're going to tell us, look, we don't need to go out there and do anything in the trade market and free agency Mm -hmm. because we believe in what we have in-house. Well, a lot of that falls on uh, on the shoulders of this 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 kid who's really opening up some eyes. I love Mike Schilt, but Schilt happens, all right? Then that, that offense brutal a year ago. I mean, there were so many missed opportunities. And listen, everyone loves Goldschmidt. I like him too, but declining value already, all right? Year no. one, we already saw declining value. So you can't expect, well, Goldschmidt, I'll pencil him in for 35 more months. That's not going to happen. And you mentioned you mentioned the loss of Zuna. Carpenter fell off the face of the earth last year. I love Flaherty. Flaherty's a top 10 pitcher in baseball, but no. they got a hit. And, right. and, and, and the, Hopefully those, Carlson can help them out. Those are merely just the appetizers, my friend. Because oh, I'm I setting wait. you up for uh, <laughs> one who is near and dear to your heart. And boy, if you're a baseball fan, especially one of the Blue Jays, you have to be hardened by what you've seen of one Nate Pearson. We've heard a lot about him the last couple of years. This is another one of the more highly touted arms at this point. I mean, look at this stuff. Jeez. Filthy against the Pirates. Two innings yesterday. No hits, no walks, three strikeouts. Hasn't given up a hit or a walk or a run or anything. He, he struck out three Yankees. And his first uh, spring appearance last week, by the way, uh, against real major leaguers, too, including from the Yankees last week and the Pirates. There were still the regulars in the game yesterday. And all I'm se- suggesting here is we, we opened the show talking about how maybe the Yankee, the multitude of Yankee injuries are opening the door for others. So the, here are the Blue Jays, and we, we love that second-generation young core of everyday players they have on hand. They go out there. They make the bold move. They spend the $80 million on Ryu. But you know they're not there yet unless – they find some real top-end pitching. And I, when I say top-end, I don't mean Chase Anderson. I don't mean Tanner Roar. But maybe a guy like that. Yeah. You, you, you've seen, you know, Josh Beckett, you know, you've seen guys come from nowhere before. Mm-hmm. Maybe he's ahead of the curve. Maybe he's a guy that, that, could, that could be a difference maker because they have a lot of the other supplemental pieces you need to have yeah. in place to be a contender. Talked to the great Dan Schoen, of course, calls Blue Jays games, and he said to me, I said, listen, I'm just concerned about the pitching. Who's going to replace Stroman, Sanchez, you know, all these names, all these guys have been jettisoned. Okay, Ryu, Roark, fine, but what else you got? I'm telling you right now, Nate Pearson throws 100. You don't see that about many guys. He throws 100 because he's gigantic. He could project to be an absolute ace. A Syndergaard type was the exact reference that Dan Schoen used to me, so I'm with you. I'm beyond excited to see Nate Pearson pitch because, as you mentioned, when he goes to that good core, you get some pitching, watch out.